These days, a lot of what we talk about with regards to streaming involves making it more complicated, more complex, adding more to it, which makes it a little difficult for beginners or those getting back to it to really get in. So today, let's finally talk about making streaming simpler again and finding the easy way to do things. This video is the easiest way to get overlays, alerts, widgets, and whatever into your OBS stream using the free Streamlabs plugin for OBS Studio. This video is sponsored by Streamlabs and is the first episode of my Streamlabs and Streamlabs desktop tutorial course. We've got about 15 or so videos diving into everything you need to know to get up and running with streaming in 2025 and beyond. And I'm super stoked to be finally bringing this to you all. I'm Eples Fox, the stream professor. Let's flip on over to the desktop and check it out. To get the Streamlabs plugin for OBS Studio, go to the link in the video description and click download the plugin. Make sure OBS is closed when you run this and run the installer from your downloads menu or go to your folder and double click it. Approve the admin prompt that may pop up. Click install. It's going to ask if you have OBS installed and tell you to restart it if you do. Click finish. And now we'll just run OBS. You can see here it's still loading the plugin. And boom, alongside OBS, you get the Streamlabs kind of dashboard that comes with the plugin here. That launches alongside it and you get some new additional docs in your OBS. We'll look at that in just a minute because none of these are going to work until we sign in with our Streamlabs account. So come over here to the Streamlabs window, log in and get started. And this is going to open up a browser page, ask you to link it to your Streamlabs ID and then everything else is kind of handled here. Now we can start setting up overlays and alerts and all sorts of stuff within your traditional OBS instance. So I have a pretty basic I, I just have a single capture device, which isn't even functional right now, and that's it. So we will build our overlay with this plugin. We also got docs for recent events. So you can see your most recent subs, your most recent bits, tips, whatever, as well as your stream chat already just preloaded into OBS, ready to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new scene collection entirely just to start from scratch. We'll call this switch. SL for Streamlabs. We're going to browse the overlays and themes window. You've got some recommended ones at the top. You've got newly added trending ones, ones specific to certain games like Marvel Rivals, Monster Hunter, Horror Games, Warcraft, Cute and Kawaii, Grand Theft Auto. Lots of different inspired things. Let's just kind of take a quick browse, get something pretty easy. Sakura Blade. That's honestly pretty sick. This is one of the amazing themes included with Streamlabs Ultra, which we'll explore a little bit in a minute. But if you have a Streamlabs Ultra subscription, then you get access to wonderful things like these really high quality overlays, CloudBot, which we'll check out later in the series, some more multi-streaming outputs and things like that. We'll, we'll develop our coverage of that more in the rest of the series. But if you want to access Streamlabs Ultra, you can go to the bottom left-hand corner here and then join Ultra. It'll open up in your browser window. There are going to be overlays available for free as well as with the Ultra. So, for example, we got this cool little purple bloom rain theme going on, which is definitely in my theme. You can search through find a theme you want. We're going to rock this awesome Streamlabs Ultra theme. So we're going to click install overlay and we're going to hit continue. It's going to download everything that it needs through this and relaunch your OBS instance with this theme layout setup, which is Pretty wild how automated it is. We start OBS. Now here we've been set up with a variety of different streams in our OBS that we can customize. We have a social media stream where we can add our different social media profiles. And you can see here they have icons for a lot of different ones. So if we want YouTube, we can choose that one and then edit the text to say at Epos Vox. And then we can edit number two. And what do we want that one to be? Patreon. Slash Epos Fox. I, I wonder where you could find me basically everywhere. And then edit number one. And we'll do Twitch. Epos Fox. Who knew? And these are just icons that you can then nest as a scene. So this is a nested scene. And you can go on and like rename these scenes for organization. Uh, so I could do nest social media. That way we just know here are our stream labels that again, we can nest in different scenes that it can just reference at different points in time. And then here are the real scenes that we want to work with our stream offline. 
which has that sick stinger transition into it. I love it. We've got our stream is ending scene. So still animated, has those social media icons, has a consistent frame that it's going to show in others. We've got a just chatting stream. And this one is bananas. Some of these layouts are set up for dual output, which is available in Streamlabs desktop. This currently isn't available in the Streamlabs plugin, but stay tuned for when it will be available. In the meantime, just hide the vertical versions of these elements in your layout. Don't be too overwhelmed initially. But now you can see here we have our stream labels. We've got our chatting window where we can add our capture card. And they even preloaded a video capture device that we can go ahead and load up here. I have the Logitech MX Brio webcam connected. Hello, hello. Look at that auto adjustment. We'll go ahead and get this set up here. We want our nice crispy 4K, Rec 709. All of that is fine. That is way too big. Fit to screen. We'll go on and resize it with the handles. I do have plenty of videos on just setting up OBS in general. Obviously, my backdrop is a train wreck right now. Uh, we could actually use the 4K resolution to just kind of zoom in a little bit and get rid of some of that. I've been, I have like three different major ongoing projects that I'm shipping stuff off for. So everything's in like triage shipping mode right now. I got some good auto exposure going on here. This is my first time using the MX Brio. It is actually pretty nice. So there we have our webcam. We got our live chat over on the right. Everything seems to be running smoothly. So here we have our different scenes. So that's our just chatting scene. We've got an intermission scene where, again, you can hide the dual layers and then fill in your webcam over here. Come over here to our video capture device. Size that back in. And then this would be where you kept your gameplay or whatever you're doing intermission during your intermission scenes. You've got to be right back scene, which is so sick. You're starting soon scene, and again, you're going to want to hide the dual options if they're showing up as overlay. And then a basic live scene for when you're playing games or whatever. And again, we want to hide the dual. This one's a little bit more overwhelming. Do not be alarmed by this. Again, we have that dual live chat bit that we need to hide. And then you do have two different options for your webcam here. So you've got a 16 by 9 frame and a 4 by 3 frame. We're actually going to use the 16 or the 4 by 3 one to crop off some of our backdrops. So we'll just resize our webcam and fit it in here and then crop it by holding alt and dragging the handles boom a little too far over let's do about there and you have a background for your game capture in case your game automatically closes or something you don't just have nothing you've got a nice little background that's on theme to go with it. This is pretty sick and it was super easy to get set up. You don't even need to think about anything or do anything. And the docs that we wanted here were already added, but if they don't show up, let's say I want to close them out, then you can go to docs over at the top of your OBS window and you have Streamlabs, recent events, Streamlabs chat. I also recommend keeping these stats doc on. This is crucial for maintaining your performance, keeping an eye on, not maintaining it, but keeping an eye that you're maintaining your performance for render and encoding lag. I talk about this a lot in videos on my channel, but now we have our stream chat or recent events. That way, if we're in the middle of a game, we can look back and call out if someone subs or pledges or tips or bits or flips or zips. And we have a nice little layout that we can quickly switch between with the most insane transition and the elements kind of fade in from them and stuff, so it all blends seamlessly together. Pretty slick. Again, you have a lot more of these overlays available with Streamlabs Ultra in the Streamlabs little plugin manager here. You also have different widgets you can add to your stream if you want more than this. Uh, that is a sick alert box, by the way. Um, but here are the different types. You've got alert boxes, so if someone subscribes to your Twitch channel or donates or tips or whatever, you can get pop-ups that call out those people and show it on screen. You've got the event list itself that can show up on screen and just keep showing if someone, you know, donates. You got your chat box, which we already have integrated with this one. You have different ones like follower goals, uh, letting your chat play a game. You can add all sorts of these to your stream. So let's add a sub goal. I'm going to click add and it just added it right to whatever scene I had open. And then we can go into the settings for it and tweak it a little bit, which is going to open it up in Streamlabs in our web browser. And we can start changing the text and things like that. So we'll say, buy me a pizza. Goal amount, $30. Pizza is very expensive these days. Actually, that's subs. So goal amounts, we'll just say 10 subs. Starting amount, we already got two. 
You can set an end date, subscriber goal, or sub points goal. Click start. All right, we have to say, all right, well, March 15th, 2025, start goal. Come back in here, refresh. There we go. We have our nice little sub goal here, and I can drag this down to this empty spot. Maybe resize it a bit. If I wanted to have that going as well, you can do all sorts of widgets like this. In this plugin window, you also have shortcuts that just take you to the Streamlabs page for setting up your tipping page, uh, multi-streaming. You can set that up as well. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, as well as CloudBot, which is their kind of moderator bot, chat bot kind of deal, uh, which is pretty sick. So you can set it up with automatic moderation protection levels all the way from minimum to maximum and off. And this kind of tells you what the different rules are for those severity levels. I'll just say minimum for now. Caps protection, don't really need that right away, but if you have an issue with a bunch of people coming in and spamming your chat with all caps, maybe you want it. Symbol protection, same thing, just trying to prevent stream spam. If you don't have a ton of problems with spam, I honestly recommend turning some of these off just so that anyone who wants to have fun that's already there can kind of play around with it. Got lots of controls there, as well as tons of custom commands you could set up. So, like, add command. Music. Epos uses music made by... Boom. And you can have it reply either in a whisper to the person or in chat. Everyone, you can control who can actually activate the command. And I'm going to hit confirm. Now, if we come over here. Music. And of course, you want to set up to mod Streamlabs in your chat and actually activate it here with this button or else it won't work at all. And if you have a Streamlabs Ultra, Ultra subscription, you'll be able to actually change the name of the bot accounts, which is great. And we'll dive in in a future video. Yeah, we, it required very little clicks to get up and running and have a super professional stream layout going here. I kind of want to look at a couple more. Let's take a look at another stream package just to see what the different varieties look like. This one looks a lot like my style. Big old neon pink and blue cyberpunk theme. Again, included with Streamlabs Ultra. We're going to click install overlay. I want to go ahead and use both options, so I'll click continue. It's going to relaunch OBS and get everything set up. And again, we're given a whole new scene collection every time you do this, so you don't ever lose any of your progress. And now we have a neon scene. And of course, we need to go ahead and fit back in our webcam and things like that. So we'll choose our MX Brio here. There we go. Okay, so they have it set up with custom resolutions to fit the scene. A, an easier way of handling this would be to make a webcam scene and then nest it. And then regardless of what your webcam resolution is in the nested scenes, or in the scenes that's added to, it would it'd be easier. But this is fine. So this is just a basic live scene. We've got the sick stinger transition with music. That is amazing. Again, you want to turn off the vertical copies of things where relevant. This is pretty slick. Look at that that transition. And the way it fades out the triangle is just... Eh. Here you can fill in your social media usernames for the starting soon screen. Kind of get a little bit of starting live. I kind of like that. A little neon flicker. Got the BRB screen. Break. I like that it's faded in the BRB. Faded like it's integrated in the background. This is super professional. Got stream ending as well. And then extra scenes, we just have a basic flat offline. Just kind of leave it on at the end. Pretty great. The only other thing I wanted to touch on for this particular video of the series is multi-streaming. So I'll go ahead and pull up the Streamlabs window, go to multi-stream. And with this, we can add multiple destinations. So we're already connected to Twitch and YouTube. You can connect all of these other accounts. You can use up to two outputs for free. And then you can add more with Streamlabs Ultra, which is great. So I'll click. And now that we've enabled both Trovo and Twitch streaming, theoretically, if we go live real quick, I'll just say, I know I should have connected to my test account for this, but that's fine. Uh, BRB quick test. People are going to be so confused and that's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and click start streaming. And it's going to ask, okay, where are you streaming? Twitch and Trovo next. You can hit shared settings. Test, please ignore. Don't need any tags, although you do have Twitch specific settings if you want a category and a tag and all that, and hit start streaming. And now it's going to handle the multi-streaming process and settings here kind of automatically. 
Make sure, of course, you sign in with your Twitch chat panel here so you can actually interact with your chat within OBS, which is wonderful. And it should send you live. And then you have your... Some, some chats are supported like Twitch and YouTube. I don't think Trovo Chat is supported for the multi-chat. But then you are live here. And so if I pull up, you can see here I am live both on Twitch and on Trovo. It's that simple. I'm going to go offline before people show up and get really confused. <laughs> If you want dual output, shared storage, and a bunch of other exclusive features, you should check out Streamlabs Desktop. I'll have a link to it in the video description, and the rest of this tutorial course will actually be focused on that program for streaming as well, which I'm super stoked because you all have been requesting a guide series on that for a very long time. Playlist link will be in the description as the videos go live, and remember to be kind, rewind.